My name is Deshonda. My daughter's name is Abriana Bailey. She's six years old. How I found Tayo Reed was Googling dance schools and dance academies in my area of Union City at the time. So that's how I found her. My determining factor for choosing Tayo Reed was I had checked out a lot of other schools and academies and studios in the area. Nobody was offering everything all in one packet for one price. Um, and it was also a good thing that she accepted CAP as well because I'm a parent that receives CAP. Um, so that was the determining factor. Even if I had not received CAP, she would have still, I would have still chosen for her to come to Tayo Reed's academy. I've been with Tayo Reed for four and a half years and my experience from day one up until now has been a good experience. Of course, there's been some rocky roads, some ups and some downs, but overall, I still stayed because Miss Tayo knows her thing. Um, if I felt like my daughter wasn't learning or she wasn't getting the best education through the dancing, through schooling, I would have taken her being an educator myself. Um, and one of the things that I love about the school, Miss Tayo is willing to take in, you know, constructive criticism and do her best to make sure that she can accommodate all parents. You know, make sure that everybody is feel needed, feel loved, make sure that everyone has a place, make sure that everyone gets the things that they need. Um, as a parent, that's an educator. I'm excited to say my daughter has excelled from the beginning to now, from two and a half to six years old. She has excelled and she's doing really well. Um, and I just, I'm thankful for Miss Tayo and her academy. been growing in her technique with dancing because when she first started she was all over the place she her angles weren't as straight her toe pointing wasn't as straight now she's very straight her body is very tight when she when she's doing what Miss Tayo asked her to do so much as her dance and her techniques um, I put her in gymnastics at the age of four and they fast-tracked her to the Olympic um, team because of her technique, because she had been in dance, because she's so limber, um, because of everything that she's learned prior, prior to being with Miss Tao. Um, when I initially enrolled Abriana, I en enrolled her in the dance academy portion. She, I ended up letting her move over into the preschool, where she was actually one of the first preschool students to go. She stayed for the whole entire preschool year. I took her out and put her in pre-K because I wanted her to get the opportunity to be in a bigger school setting, given that she's going to kindergarten afterwards. Although Miss Tayo does kindergarten. Um, I just wanted her to get to see a few other kids. So I took her out for the that school year. She ended up becoming a behavior problem because she was so far advanced than the other pre-K kids in her class. When she left Miss Tayo's preschool, she was reading at the age of four because she started pre-K um, when she turned four. She was reading at the age of four. She knew all, knew all of her letters, her sound. She was able to phonetically sound out letters and sound out words. She knew her numbers from one to 50. She could count from one to 100. Um, she knew everything that she needed to know in pre-K. Um, and because she was so far advanced and the other children in the pre-K were behind, she became as the teachers would say, a behavior problem. Um, I allowed her to go to kindergarten at a charter school. Again, she was so far advanced over the other kids. I ended up removing her and bringing her back to Tayo Reed's um, Performing Arts Academy to continue to finish out kindergarten. Um, Ms. Tayo was mad because I removed her in pre-K, but I brought her back because I saw a difference from the public sector and her working directly with Ms. Tayo doing her educational growth. Ariana first went to competition with Ms. Tayo at the age of four. Um, when they went to competition, they didn't have a spot for them. So they had to create one and place them with the seven and the eight year olds. That they won, let me put that out there. They ended up winning the nationals and the regional um, for the actually last three years since she's been four, five, and six. Um, and during that time while we had competition and they had to just place our babies somewhere because 
they didn't have anywhere to put them. And Sayo was very upset about that and, and fussed about it. What do, what do, what do, what? I had to put that in there um, to make sure that our babies were able to compete on the level that they needed to compete on. And again, I say, because Miss Sayo know her thing, these four-year-old, five-year-old baby won over seven and eight-year-old um, kids that had been doing this for a while. Um, so, all in all, Miss Tayo, she know a thing. And come uh, on, wait, write that down. Put that action. on action. Uh, you only put that on paper, ma'am. No, uh, 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 action. They put us in the wrong category. They had to level us up and upgrade us to seven and eights, and we still won. Is Tayo Reed too expensive or you know, is she affordable? As a parent and doing research, I would say that she's not expensive. She's very affordable um, because the children are working on something Monday through Friday. Um, they're doing dance, they're doing jazz, they're doing oh. tap, they're doing ballet, they're doing hip hop, they're doing whatever, they're doing foreign language, music, drama, instruments, they're doing all of this stuff in a week's time in a package. You have other schools and other studios that are giving you dance, giving you hip hop and jazz on one day for $85. Um, and if you want your child to take multiple things, that's $85 for hip hop and jazz, well hip hop, another $85 for jazz, another $85 for tap, another $85 for ballet. Now you're spending three, four, five hundred dollars a week to um, have your child to participate in the dance when Ms. Teo's program gives you all of that and an education for a very low price. But oh. hey, that is it's good for me. Extracurricular activities like the Parents Night Out, the parade, um, the competitions and different stuff like that. I really appreciate, cause this, this Parents Night Out was my second Parent Night Out that I did with Ms. Teo. And I think that it's a great idea. I think she should do it at least twice every two to three months, <laughs> honestly. Um, but, um, I was appreciative because she actually did it um, Valentine's night for parents who wanted to spend, you know, Valentine's with their significant other. And I thought that that was very thoughtful that she put whatever she wanted to do or had to do on the back burner to, to accommodate the parents to give them the opportunity to spend some quality time alone. Um, even with the parades and having the kids, you know, do the parades and have them to baby network is what I call it, um, for people to see to see their talent and to see that just because they're they're small and they're I don't like to call them babies, but they're gifts wrapped in small packages that they have a lot to offer, and she was able to do that um, in the city of Union City when she was there, and now she's out here in the city of College Park to do bigger and better things. So. Um, so that everybody can see what these babies have to offer. Communication is key for me. I don't per se like communication that's emailed to me because I'm not an email checker. I like communication where I can put it in my hand, I can read it, I like reminders. I don't like communication that's given to me in January and you want me to remember this for me. Um, with my life being so busy, I'm not gonna remember. From the time my daughter started with Teo, we've had to tweak the communication skills to fit me because everybody's not like me. You have some parents that love email. You love some, have parents that love text messages. You have some parents who have memory like an elephant and can remember from January. I'm not her. So we've had to tweak the way that Ms. Ms. Teo communicates with me, <laughs> which is paper, <laughs> reminder, um, she still do emails, even after I told her, Mateo, don't email me because I don't check my email like that. She still email me, but she'll also shoot me a text message with the same information. She'll verbally tell me. She'll give it to me in paper sometimes. Um, so we've come a long way with our communication. It has nothing to do with the performing arts or the educational part of it. Um, but I've been here so long, so we working on our communication together, and we about 89% of the way there. <laughs> but we getting there, we doing good. Summer camp, for me, is key. One, because I, I work during the summer, most summer. It gives her somewhere constructive to go that continues to help her with her education, and continues to help her with her dance, and continues to help her. Um, she has been in summer camp with Miss Teo since she was, since she turned three years old, um, and it has helped. 
he keeps her busy. You know, she's not at just she's just not at home sitting and watching TV. She's not at home just on the tablet. She's actually doing something. She's taking educational field trips. She's continuing to hone her technique. She's continuing to work on her craft. That she, what she wants to do. She's falling every day and every summer and every season. She's falling more and more in love with just the uh, just dance. Um, and I like to keep her here through the fall, through the spring, through the summer, so that she can continue to do that. Um, and we don't lose that. And I just found out that some dance academies is closed for two months. I didn't know that. So now you have a place to put your babies for the end of May, June, and July. I've been asked this particular question a million times since Monday. Um, right now we're going through a coronavirus epidemic, pandemic, or whatever we're going through. And my daughter is currently at Teo Reeves Performing Arts Academy during this time. Um, and I feel that, first of all, the building, the classroom, the center is clean and sanitized. That's number one. If I felt at any given moment that my daughter's health or safety was an issue, she would still be at home. Um, when all of this took place, Ms. Teo made sure because my daughter was in a Fulton County school that first that she was safe and she automatically went into, uh, I now got to protect the other kids and make sure that they're safe because my daughter was actually going to a Fulton County school when Fulton County school shut down um and i kind of got mad um but i had to stop as a teacher and remember hey i would do the same thing for a sick child or a child that's in a sick situation you know to protect the other children in the class because it becomes about safety um but with that just that sheer concern of first of all she was concerned about my baby Ms. Taylor is currently registering for summer camp. Run your baby here, get her shaped up, get him shaped up, get those muscles built up, those dance legs, that that, that perfect silhouette that I don't know how to do a passe and I might be even saying it wrong and a pirouette, but come get your baby registered so she or he can learn how to do it. Fall 2021, come bring your baby in here so that they can learn something valuable, not just anything because Ms. Taylor been preaching to me about this public school education. I'm going to get it right. We're going to come eventually because I love it here. But get your baby here so that your baby can learn what my baby has learned and what my baby knows. Um, she here. We waiting for you. Bring your kids.